Welcome to day three of the Royal Ascot meeting then. It's the third and final preview show today and we're all got an end of term feel about things. We're going to have a look at some of the uh, horses that have returned back here to Leadham Towers later on and we're also going to uh, introduce you to all the members of the team so you can see some faces to names. It's always interesting to put faces to names isn't it? to see people actually look what you think they're going to look like. So we're going to get straight into that now then. Okay, so first up then is everyone's favourite Aussie. It's Doug Warren been commentating on SO for quite some time. I've been doing these preview shows with me since they started. And he's always got a tale or two to tell about something or other. And we'll move on to Stu Gray, the man who goes and does the um, does the course reports and commentates with me most of the time on the National Hunt. And he's got himself a little race goer there to have a chat to and give an autograph to no doubt hiding behind his sunglasses now the newest member of the commentary team is nick driver resplendent in his racing post jacket and his flat cap he looks more geared up for cheltenham than um ascot but i'm sure he'll be back for cheltenham anyway and he's done a great job being chucked in at the deep end this season and here's our substitute commentator for the week, Graham Clutterbuck, El Presidente, as you've noticed. Some people, he puts all this sort of stuff together. And uh, he steps in at the last minute when Tim was unavailable. And a good job he's done as well. Almost as a good job, great. So he's looking really happy as usual. And there's Lady Sharon of Bootle. Oh, she's escaped the clutches of the law and is back with us again today. And has also done a good job for us in this first appearance and then finally we've got the mad hatter i'm not quite sure who that character is supposed to be but he just looks like a bit of a weirdo that happened to stumble into the place and got his photograph taken all right then back to sensibility time now let's have a look and see who the leading trainers are so far this week well paul Rhodes is top of the shot with five darren thompson's got three we've got three on two that's nick driver dan hughes and mark jones that's particularly well done to them as they've not been around that long and then we've got a whole host of trainers there you can see on one steve Rand, marty leadham django james shea joshua sullivan david robertson vinnie gerard and john morgan let's hope we have more added to that list today so we're we'll doing things in a slightly different order today when it's the last day let's get out and see what the course conditions are like today is it me oh ah well join me here still in uh, britain brittle in uh, ascot and i was supposed to be down there on the grassy bit but i didn't bring the picnic so without picnic i didn't think it would was worth going down there. But what's happening today? Well, there's horses. There's a lot of horses here, and there's lots of little little people who get on <laughs> their backs. Oh, are you eh? It's Simon. I love Simon. Hello, Simon. Wee. <laughs> They're all very colourful, these little people. But they've got butt sticks in their hands. And then they all go in this light green cage thingy. Right, and there's lots more little men running around. It's a bit like watching Snow White on speed. So, anyway, I think I was supposed to talk about something else. Uh, the, the grass, that's what I was supposed to talk about. Well, it's green. If you can see it, it's green, it's down there. And uh, there's uh, the weather's good. I think the sun is shining. There's people sitting on the grass, so it can't be wet. So I imagine it's uh, dry. Um, there hasn't been much else to really talk about. I could tell you about some of what happened yesterday. But I'm not going to. Because I can't remember. I think some people won some things. And that will just make us all try and win some things today. Anyway. Oh, I'll hand you back to the studio.
Well, I'm not overly sure whether that was still or whether it was Lester Piggott. It could have been uh, could have been anybody, to be honest. And if anybody can work out what the ground is from that, well, you're a better man than me. Because I can't make head and a tail of it, but it was uh, all seemed pretty entertaining, whatever. Anyway, what we're going to do next then is go into the chat that we had about day three's racing. And you may well be not too surprised to find following that that Stu had to go home and go to sleep. And so he wasn't able to... Um, participate in the talk about day three and while the day three is going on i to show you some pictures and videos as well from some of the things that are going on here at Needham Towers at the moment. Right Queen's Vase is next in and there's a bit of confusion about this because I thought they dropped it down to one mile six but it's still saying two miles on here so I'm not sure how far they're going to run it over. Yeah I'm not sure actually. It's obviously officially a mile and six, but whether it's been changed for the league or not, I don't know. Well, it was changed last time because there was a there was a post in there saying to remind everybody that it was down to one mile six, but it seems to have crept back up to two again, so I'm quite sure what's going on there. Well, no doubt we'll find out. I'm not sure who's commentating on it. Um, oh, it's me, so I'll, I'll assume that it's two miles because that's what it says on Tom, so... Uh, people would have entered it as though it's a two mile race I think lots of new ones in this again uh, John Morgan's got a new one most of the ones that have run don't look that brilliant so I'm going to go for John Morgan's bra she me too well I don't think you are actually Doug because you can't see the card and th there's a horse called Winks in this you're not going to tip that I did call her when I won the other week hmm uh, what's the rating of the race? It's an open race. The top rated one's 111. Winks is on 102. But it's a, it's a, it's a uh, level one. I'll go with John Morgan's. I'll go with John Morgan's. Okay. Nick? It's a tough one, this, actually. On form, you're probably looking at Ultimate Angel, but again, John and Leon both have newcomers, and Leon's just says class horse, so I'm going to go with that one. If he yeah. thinks it's that good, it probably yeah. is. Yeah, the only thing that put me off that one is the fact that his, his three year olds are not that good, so maybe. We've probably got it between us there, I think, anyway. Yeah. Mm. Right, Buckingham Palace Stakes is next. This is a seven furlong. 0 to 70 in the SO7 world, and it looks the form doesn't look that brilliant for most of them. What do you reckon, Nick? Yeah, as you said, it's nothing spectacular, really. Uh, Pure Pierre won a 0 to 100 last week, so I'm going to go with that one now. It's dropping down into a 0 to 70, so we'll see there. Uh, I think the two of Mike Westwood's uh, run well. Let me just have a look at the form. It was rated 60, won a 0 to 100, is now rated 67 in a 0 to 70, so yeah. Going on that basis, that will be my pick. But I think to uh, Mike Westies, uh, the two of his might run a good race as well. Yep, that's a good call. Well, this is a oh, this is a chance for Derek Hinton to get a win. He could win this. Derek with gallant Cadillac. Yeah, I'm, I'm going for the Hollywood horse. Which won a race or two ago. And of course, we've got Everton Brook in this one, the one that sometimes doesn't come out of the stalls. So, be interesting to see what that one does. Oh, we should have a start a book up to see if it'll jump. The trainer doesn't seem to think so. <laughs> yeah, we had that one over the jumps, didn't we? Few Charlie, Charlie's or used to get left at the start every week. Right, Chesham next. A listed seven furlong race for two year olds. I'll tell you straight away, Doug. John Morgan's got a, a two time winner that's unbeaten. And listen. Yep. Yep. We'll, we'll go with that. When he starts, when he has horses that start stringing them together, they're usually pretty handy. Yeah, it looks. It looks like it's the best one. Josh has got one in there that looks like it might be a little bit decent. It's been second twice in the one, but yeah, you can't you can't go against some beaten horses, can you? Really? So yeah, Tina Inch for me as well. Map of the festival, I'd say. Yep. I can't have it be. And then we go on to the Hardwick, which have they upgraded that to a Group One in real life yet? Uh, no, don't think so. Yeah, they should do, shouldn't they, really? Because there's not really a mile and a half older horse race at Ascot. That's Group 1, there should be, I think. But um, Group 2, Doug, top rated horse in its 120. A lot of newcomers. Wow, ah, some uh, people who are pretty confident with the newcomers going into a Group 2. Mm. Who's the 120 horse? Well, there's two 120 horses. Craig Allen, which has won... It's called Lil Bandit, which has won two of its last four. But then Gray's got the other one, Sin Script, which has won its last three. Now, you don't get many that win three or four on a trot in this. Yeah, let's go with Gray's, because that seems like a pretty handy horse. It does, but you don't see many winning three or four races on the trot, so it's it's going to be difficult for it, I think. I and mean, it was a Group 1 handicapping one, I think, last time. I think that Moral Disorder and will win. I'm with Leon too, but I think the other one, uh, Brother in Arms, if you go back and look at the form, it won its maiden race, which beat that Keep Your Distance of Django's, and it also beat Sin Script. If you look back on its form, it won that maiden, was third in the Coronation Cup, and it was injured the other two times. So you can scrub them off. Um, if it doesn't injure itself somehow, I think it's going to go quite close. Okay, so I think Leon's got a good chance in that one then. Doug's gone for grey. Hmm. All right, the 
Diamond Jubilee. Next, this is the second big all-age sprint, isn't it? The Australian it's... sprint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you liking in, in that, Nick? Um, proper races, I think. It's quite interesting. I, I haven't gone with any of Hems as yet, so I'm going to go with the top-rated IMR Cruzen. Um Ground's perfect. The Duke of York was a proper race last week or the week before. And a lot of these in here also likely to be better over seven. Tasman Bluff for John Morgan probably got a good chance. Proper six foot on horse. And Paul Rhodes has got an unraced one who he says is an absolute monster. So we will see. But I think I'm hard cruise end for me. Okay. What do you reckon, Doug? Oh, black caviar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Django ain't got one. Oh, hang on. I'll change it. Chaucey. <laughs> hang on. I'll take over target. Okay. <laughs> did Miss Andrea get a run in it? Yeah, she did as well. And she was it? Merchant Navy last year. Merchant Navy, yeah. Senate Blast ran in it. Merchant Navy. That's just a hack here in Australia and it wins that yeah. race. <laughs> did uh, uh, what's the Star Spangled Banner? Did that win the King's Stand or the Jubilee? I can't remember. Oh, no, I can't remember that. I there actually saw know. Star Spangled Banner. My grandparents live about a f- stone's throw from Caulfield. So I've been there a oh, few right. times. Um, oh, yeah. I saw I saw her brother son win the Miss Finland Stakes, I think, is it? which then in turn led me to back mm-hmm. it when it won the lock-ins over here. Yeah, no, no you've, you've been around. I've <laughs> been around, yeah. You know what I've noticed, Mark? What's that? Out of uh, the four of us, with Stu, mm-hmm. Nick's, Nick's the only one that sounds like he hasn't abused drugs or alcohol. Mm-hmm. You just sound like he's able to know what he's talking about as well, doesn't it? Really? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure if we do a few more of these over the next seasons or two, we'll get we'll get him down to our level before too long. <laughs> Have I picked one in this shit? No, <laughs> don't think so. No. Who's who's a favourite? Um, I don't know really. I'll... Tough one, so tight. I mean, oh, there's, there's one called trainer, Tasman Bluff. That's nearly Tasmania, so you could go for that one. Yes, I'll go with that. And it's John Morgan's as well. So well, there you go. And uh, and he does love a sprinter. He does. Trainer. I've got a sneaky feeling that um, Leon's horse might win this waterfall, even though he says it's mm. more of a seven furlong horse. I think you can probably get away with being a seven furlong horse here. Yeah. I'm going to go for that one. Mm. Fair enough. Which we're getting close to the close to the end now. We've got the Wokingham, which is normally 30 odd runners charging up the Ascot straight. It's quite a, quite a big field again. One or two with some decent looking form. It's a 0 to 110, Doug, over six mm. furlongs. I'm thinking a name like Wokingham. A- Sounds like a uh, Division Two club. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so there'll be a lot of washed up has beens in it. So um, was it no, zero to a hundred, zero to ninety, zero to one hundred and ten? Ooh, one hundred and ten. Mm. Uh, Josh, one of Josh's horses. Coffee and donuts. Yeah, coffee and donuts. Yeah. Yes, yeah, definitely stick mm. with that because I love a coffee and a donut. So, talking about coffee and donuts, what what did you end up? doing with your dinner thing that was a bit of a problem wasn't it earlier on well the missus had cooked up a uh, nice um, beef curry and she's got a sister and a niece here and they were chatting and they forgot about it <laughs> so so I got burnt so we had to zip down to the Greek restaurant near my shop and uh, got a big feed of Greek food ah, right. no, normal spread chips calamari yeah I've seen some I photographs of some of that stuff that you have it looks like there's enough there to feed about three people half the time yes you have seen that photo oh yeah is, is yes. it everywhere sort of still open over there and stuff or do you have things closed um, down and stuff over here we um, handled uh, we, we dodged a big bullet dodged a big bullet and yeah the only major stuff up we had was letting this cruise ship land oh yeah and yeah so th- th- there'll, there'll be a lot of uh, poli- political uh, wash up from that but yeah it, where I live in South Australia uh, you know well hell my shop is still open it's not like I'm essential well for some blokes I am but, uh, <laughs> whereabouts are you? in Adelaide Adelaide nice yeah. I'm, guess, I'm guessing, and, uh, Nick, because you've not been to a lot of normally. I'm, do you know about Doug's shop? No, no. <laughs> All right, no. okay. <laughs> it, it's been um, involved in quite a few of our discussions about things and horse names and stuff. I'll let Doug explain what it is he does because he sometimes tells us some great stories about his customers. No, 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 you can tell him. I don't like talking about it. All right, okay. It's, um, somebody named a horse for him once and called it Doug's Plastic Paradise. <laughs> Most of his customers wear raincoats, I think, um, and have a look and see if anybody notices them on the way in. Well, they would do if they were in England, but in Australia, they're not that bothered. 
Are you getting the idea? Yeah, I've got the idea. My uh, <laughs> my grandparents actually, actually used to run a milk bar in Sturt. Hang on, hang on. Where are you, where are you going with milk bar? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I actually entails, but yeah. But, uh, my dad used to support Sturt. Uh, oh, yeah, so do I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's a Collingwood fan for his sins, though, however. Yeah, no, well, he's got a... He's definitely got some problems there, hasn't he? So business wasn't affected by the old coronavirus then, Doug? People were still coming in for their um, things, were they? Yes, yes. We had, we've had some quiet days and we've had some very good days, so it averages out, but... Yeah, in, in where I live, it wasn't that bad. Like, you know, obviously some people unfortunately lost their lives and, and a lot of people got sick, but, you know, we're sort of returning back to to normal. We're not there yet, but we're, we're well ahead of probably just about everywhere else in the world except New Zealand. Yeah, they only had one person die up there from New Zealand. But, so. Yeah, the, the uh, Prime Minister there, she locked it down like nobody's business, so she didn't mess around at all. Probably would have been the uh, sensible thing for everywhere to do. Anyway, let's get back to the back to the yes. <laughs> back to the race before we. Yeah, you know what's funny about that is even when Boris looks like he's almost dead, still got the same hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Has oh, yeah, anyone ever talked to him about his hair? Like really? I don't know. I think, strange, I'm, I'm sure he must do it on purpose. Let's try and make is, himself. Look. Is he too tight to buy a car? <laughs> It's probably because of all that time he spends on that bike, because he rides a bike all the time, and when the wind blows it into that sort of position, that's probably just the way that it is. I don't know. What it, well, I, don't, I don't know, really. But, uh, he, looks a bit, he looks a bit beefy for a bike rider. He's not running these days. Like he's trying to lose weight. <laughs> so he should be. <laughs> I mean, he was a bit drastic trying to lose weight the other week, catching coronavirus, but that's if he really had it. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, whatever you got to do to get get the start at the ball going, you know, the momentum. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so let's go back to this race then before we get ourselves locked up. Yep. Uh, has anybody picked anything yet? I can't remember. A uh, Wokingham. Doug has, I believe. Wokingham, I think Doug went for coffee and donuts. That's, Josh's. Right. that's the one, that's the one, that's the one. And what about you, Nick? I think every man, their dog, their cat, their goldfish has gone for defence rests in the uh, tipping competition, and I'm going to stick with that one. Lower company, it's bolted up by like three lengths and four lengths in its last two runs. Um, we'll just sneak into the handicap because a lot of these are going to be out the weights and probably has a good chance. Vinny Gerard has actually won the last two, so his two up the top there, we Wai Damsel and Helen Colony probably have a good chance as well. Yeah, I can't remember what I've gone for in the tipping competition, but um, I'm looking at looking at this, I'm going for Hannon Colony. I would think that's what I've gone for, but I can't remember. To be honest, I forgot to do it completely last week, and I think I had one of my better weeks because I ended up with naught. Um, but yeah, I think Vinny Gerard's got a good chance of winning that one. Right, Duke of Edinburgh next then. Uh, mile on six, naught to 90. <laughs> Uh, Vinny Gerard. <laughs> does he have one? No, no, he doesn't have one. He ain't got one. <sighs> oh, hang on. Um, Steve Rand. Yeah, he's got one. Columbus Seal yep. Dark. Yep. Yep. I'll, roll, I'll roll with that one. Previous winner running off 85. Got a chance, I suppose. Yep. Yeah, I'll pick you back on that one. Ran an, all, ran an all right race in Group 1 company. 85 is uh, pretty good for a mark considering the company. Got a good chance. Oh, that's my pick anyway as well. I think we can get somebody getting his probably his first Raw Ascot winner here and I reckon it's going to be Thomas Rogers with Captivity Balafri mm, that's a good got a good chance as well be good to see Thomas get a first group one he's done alright in his first season I think this is his first season I yeah like it that, is yeah. I think the, 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 the only person we've had in recent years who's had as good a first season as that was Django when Django turned up he was on fire wasn't he mm, right from, yes, the, from yeah. the start but normally most of the newcomers don't do that well for the first season or so but straight off uh, SO7 SI, SI is a different beast it is it certainly is <coughs> um, and he might well get his first um, his first Royal Ascot winner with that one if he hasn't had one already of course I'm trying to think if I won the Gold Cup in my first season it was SO3 and I had a horse called Kings of Albion that won the Gold Cup. No, oh. I don't know if it was my first season or my second season. It was a monster either way. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Brighton Horse. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you know something, Doug? Yeah, I was talk, talk, talking about football. This is Brighton's longest unbeaten run for 75 years. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, we haven't been playing. <laughs> I, I took a friend of mine from Canada to watch Brighton Wolves at the beginning of the year and being a Chelsea season ticket holder for the past 20 years that was the worst game of football I've ever seen in my life it was it was a 
there was one nil. I think I can't remember. I think it was Glenn Murray scored. But I went down for a beer at half time, and I missed the only action of the whole game <laughs> when they restarted after the second half because I was still in the queue. <laughs> but yeah, what a dross game yeah. that was. Yeah. You should have been watching the, the Brighton Tottenham game. That was a good one. I can't remember that one. I can't remember that one. What happened there? We won. We won three 0 oh, Very nice. The only other time I've been to Brighton is when you got absolutely tanked five 0 by Liverpool and Coutinho oh, around who the does, show. Who does A couple doesn't? of years ago. Yeah, I remember that game too. I, I saw the first two go in. I thought this doesn't look good, so I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we're not talking about Liverpool. We don't like talking about Liverpool. No, we don't. <laughs> Scales, bloody box cars. No, the, the blue half. The blue half's fine. It's the red half we don't like. Oh, right, so are we, are we doing that race in there? Yeah, we have. Right, so the final race of the week mm. at Ascot is the two mile five furlong race. What's this all about? 4,000. the Ascot Gold Cup. That's two and a half. This is two mile five. This is a, a, a furlong further. And I've been very kind to both of you because I've commentated on this one. just... I know some people don't like these long distance flat races because they can't think of anything to say. Well, I don't anymore. I just let it go silent. Yeah, this is a thing we still haven't quite worked out yet. Do, how many people do you think actually do listen to us and how many people just press the mute button and watch the race? <laughs> <laughs> well, in that, if I was calling that race, they wouldn't need to use them. Yeah, you know, these are the sort of races where you normally tell us a story you know, about women, women doing well, things true, outside your shop and stuff and people... Hmm. Swapping videos over and things and all that sort of stuff. So, so, was, so what's the rating of this race? It's a it's a naught to one twenty for some reason. I don't know why it's naught to one twenty. That's a lot, isn't it? It, it is for a two mile five sort of race. And I thought this would and have the been top a... rating is ninety five. <laughs> yeah, top rating is ninety five. Hmm. So it's a funny one. This one maybe one or two of the people who've put something in the gold cup that's got absolutely no chance of winning might have been better off slipping it into this. So yes, yes. Now, I seem to remember that a certain somebody at the beginning of the season was shouting about a horse called 70 Star that was going to be really good. Oh, it's, it's dross. It's absolute rubbish. It's weird, isn't it, the no, way that happens? A... You get ones that you think are going to be really good and they end up just being absolutely awful. Well, I actually found that Dutch forward after I put 70 Star through and Dutch forward had beaten it by five lengths or whatever. But, I mean, this thing, the, the jockey decides to, to hold it up, you know, in Wales from England and then decides to, you know, come uh, about the two mile five mark. I mean, this thing needs four miles and still probably won't win. <laughs> now, now, tell me, is Josh's horse stays all day in this race? Uh, he w- wants to stay wants forever. To stay forever, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, don't. That'll run near last. <laughs> <laughs> that they needed more than five transfer outs really because the, mm. even though even the really good trainers have got quite a few dodgy ones and I think he probably would have considered taking it out if he had something to, to swap it with because it, it, it doesn't yeah. look that good but yeah, he, he's, had, he's had a few misses on the flat he has it's funny isn't it because I mean he's not foreign on the flat and Paul Rhodes isn't falling on the jumps, which is really strange. I mean, last week seeing Paul Rhodes finishing last and last but one or something in a hunter chase is just unthinkable, wasn't it? Um, mm-hmm. So it will be interesting. Yeah, the, only to see. That, the only time he did that in SO6 were a little spilling at uh, Grey. How could he let one of his horses in a <laughs> Yeah, he, he, he slipped in the big hunter, didn't he, at Cheltenham while top weight and sort of won it, pulling a card, pulling a card. Yeah, we'll never forget hunting. that. We'll never forget that. <laughs> So, so it's going to be, that's going to be one of the interesting things this week to see how much Josh has improved on the flat and how much Paul's improved on the jumps. Um, and if they've both improved as much as they probably have, we'll be back to where we were before in SL6, won't we? Um, with, with them miles better than everybody else, apart from they've got Leon for company now as well. Um, and yeah, look at, looking at this, it's the top two have managed to win. The rest of them haven't done a lot. I mean... Peter Savage has got one in that's got two duck eggs next to its name. Gray's got one in that pulled up last time out. Um, one of those races that you could pick nothing really with any confidence. But I know Gray likes these long distance races and I reckon that if we forget that pull up last week if it's okay, I think top of the wood for Gray will win. Yeah, what do you think, Nick? Uh, yeah, I haven't tipped up one of James' shows yet and he doesn't normally leave us without a winner, so it's quick fire Maria for me. So who are the top two, Mark? The top two, quick fire Maria for James Shea is 95, Devon Twinkle for Thomas Rogers is 90, and uh, they've both won a race. Yeah, I'll go with uh, Thomas Rogers' horse. Oh, right, so Thomas Rogers might get a double on the last day, which would be, uh, mm. which would be interesting. 
so the royal ascot race is dealt with you're jumping in the um jumping in the so6 jumbo jet aren't you or so7 jumbo jet nick and going off and doing the last leg of the american triple crown i think aren't you oh probably i haven't looked at it at all <laughs> i'll have a quick look now where is it uh what race is it uh, it's the bonus race races. Races. oh race bonus number. it's usually yeah one of the last ones yeah Ooh, bonus yeah, special here we go um well derby winners normally tend to be rubbish so there's two of them for Paul Rose at the top I like that better Donna I tell you what I think I've commentated on it the last four times and it's I'm so glad it won the Oaks it was, it's been so unlucky previously I think it was second in the Kentucky Derby it just got done on the line um yeah I'm gonna go with better Donna yeah he did that we did that well in the Oaks last week because it looked beaten when it first them to go didn't it when they 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 got past it, but then it, it fought back pretty well. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, the biggest surprise about this one is the fact that John Morgan hasn't got one in it because he's sort of uh, he's really big on these American dirt, dirt races. Dirt he hasn't got one. So that's a bit of a it's a bit of a surprise. And of course, Paul's got the top two because he sort of likes them as well. But yeah, I think the way that that Belladonna came back last week, I'd um, I'd be sticking with that one. <laughs> Steve Rand got one on this one. No. Yeah, he's usually good with the American races as well. So, just goes to show you how uh, so. So that's it then. That's the all the Ascot races plus a bonus of the Belmont. Hopefully we tip a few winners. Um, right. So that's it then. All the races done. Okay. Right. It's good. To, good to chat to you again. Um, I think we're probably going to be back for for Cheltenham. I don't know whether you're going to come. Are you going to come and do Cheltenham, Nick, or do you not do the jumping? Yeah. Why not? I'll come in for Cheltenham. Okay. If, if anything interesting happens in the meantime, we may see about doing another, another one of these. Get a bit of get a bit of practice in. But we'll definitely be back for. Um, Definitely about for Cheltenham. Maybe can maybe consider doing consider doing Goodwood if we can work it out so that we're all awake at the same time of day. And you sound remarkably sober as well, Doug. For the time of night it is there. You're normally in the clink of ice cubes and the pouring of gin while we're doing this. I've got, a, I've got a Prosecco going here, so... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, another thing you need to know, Nick, is all the things you think about Australia, just rip them up and throw them out the window with Doug. He's not sort of barbecue-eating beer swilling. He's champagne and oysters <laughs> and ruined posh stuff and oh, fancy God, restaurants. Oh, a bit high class, mate. And glasses of Prosecco and stuff. I mean, crikey. <laughs> Okay, well, it's good. It's good to chat to you both. Enjoy the week, and hopefully, we'll all go. I'll say we'll all get some winners. You haven't got any runners this year, Doug. So you're missing having any. You're going to put some in next time. I'll see how we go. Yeah, be good. To, be good to get you get you back in. It was always nice seeing those cerise colours coming in at the back of the field every day. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I had a couple of wins, but um, yeah, I might just if I come back in, I might just concentrate in the flat, not worry about the jumps. So. Yeah, that's good. Okay, righto. Nice to speak right, to you, Nick. Nice and um, I yeah, hope we haven't sort of. Um, I hope your sort of powers that be at the Racing Post don't hear this and decide to sort of tell you off for getting involved with amateurs. But, um. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's very good. Let's do it. <laughs> we'll, we'll speak yeah, to you next time. Sack for sure, Nick. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> we'll just be doing. We'll be doing a greyhound race in a Hackney or somewhere next week. <laughs> 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 right, uh, okay. Hang on, before yep. you go, before yep. you go, I remember I had a drink at a bar once. There's an old Brit guy in there, and and uh, he was hard up for a chat, so he had a chat with me. And he's t- talking to me about greyhound racing in England. Hmm. And he said out oh, this uh, one track, I don't know what track it was, it had to be Bush League, and for some reason all the dogs coming out of the one box weren't winning. And uh, anyway, they checked it out one day and they'd found that someone had whitewashed inside the one box with lime, so the dogs would go in there and get stinging eyes. <laughs> they jumped up. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Do you know what? <laughs> Do you know what? You won't believe this. You'd think this was a setup because I know where that truck is and it's not there anymore because it's about, it is about four miles away from where I am now at this very minute. It was Coventry's old dog track, Brandon, and Trap won, never won it. It was the, the speedway there as well. And it shut down now, but it was it was it was yes, just should. it was just up the road. Yeah, tra- trap won't never won. So you're telling me a true story? It's, it's true, yeah, it, it's true. It did happen. <laughs> yeah, oh, it, it didn't surprise me because the dogs are as dodgy as they can. <laughs> That's right. So, 
I don't know how we managed to do that. We managed to get um, third-rate dog racing into Royal Ascot, but there you go. Certainly didn't need a top, top hat to go there. And um, yeah. It's the easiest thing to, easiest thing to rig. You, know, you just put the dog into the box and you just give him a squirrel grip. And he's finished, didn't he? I, I don't know whether I want to ask this question, but what's a squirrel grip? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Nick, do you want to explain it? No, I don't, I don't know what it is, so I'm not going to explain it. Obviously, something, really? os- something Australian, is it? Hang on. What do squirrels eat? Nuts. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.